Hey, it's Chris. Today, I'm gonna share the reasons why I think the future looks super bright for the iPad Pro lineup. And by the end of this video, just by the nature of the topic, I think you're also gonna end up with a really good idea of whether or not the 2021 iPad Pro is the one that you should buy or whether you should probably wait for something that you feel is gonna be like more of an impactful, meaningful upgrade. But you might be surprised. Historically, it's almost entirely been hardware updates and hardware advantages that have made the iPad Pro feel more pro than other iPads. And the big hardware updates this year being a better display on the 12.9 inch, and of course, a faster processor in both models. Now, the new mini LED display on the 12.9 inch truly is a shrunken down version of the $6,000 Pro Display XDR. In fact, the larger iPad Pro's new screen is so pro, it even makes the screen on the MacBook Pros seem less pro. And the M1 chip is powerful and fast. It's literally Mac level power. But here is the crucial question as I see it. Do either of these new hardware advancements enable pro iPad users to get new types of work done? Do they open up new workflows? Can any new sort of output be achieved? Or do these new hardware additions simply equate to a richer, but already existing iPad experience? Put differently, do the new iPad Pros do anything that these, the old iPad Pros, can't do? Or do they simply do what these older iPad Pros can already do, but just a little bit better? Pre-WWDC, I would say probably the latter. But that could change very rapidly in just a matter of a couple months, and we could end up with these new iPad Pros feeling a whole lot newer thanks to some software updates likely coming at WWDC. And that's needed for an iPad Pro because the fact is that any iPad already does exactly what most consumers need it to do. And adding a banana's new display to the new iPad Pro will make most consumers envious. It's something they would want to have, who wouldn't? Because yeah, watching HDR content is gonna basically be mind blowing on your tablet now. But if you're gonna slap the word Pro on the iPad Pro, it necessarily can't just be about a better content consumption experience you have to let creative professionals do the actual work that earns them their living. Otherwise, any Mac that lets them do that same work is gonna technically remain more pro than the iPad Pro, at least in some regard. The content creation aspect, I think, really needs to heavily be emphasized because there are certain creative workflows that just can't take advantage of that new M1 chip, yet. So coders who use Xcode, they know what I'm talking about. So do musicians who crave the full Logic recording experience. And so do video editors who need the full power of Final Cut Pro. And that's just to name a few different types of pro users. Basically, I think it all comes down to what is going to be a temporary software barrier for the iPad Pro. And just to kind of further develop this, here's a quote from me on the M1 chip and the iPad Pro's capabilities from my coverage last week. Look. Literally nobody was complaining that the last generation of iPad Pros was too slow. And that was without the M1. So why does 50% faster performance and an eight core GPU and 40% faster graphics actually matter in real life? Well, until and unless iPadOS gets some crazy updates, I really don't know. And just before we get any further, let me just say, if you're liking the vibe of this video, take this opportunity to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my unboxing and review and comparison content, my tips, my app suggestions for the iPad Pro coming up soon. Anyways, anymore, a new chip upgrade rarely makes the iPad Pro feel more professional because it's already super screaming fast. And you know, accessories do tend to go a long way towards enhancing how professional the iPad experience feels. So think things like the Magic Keyboard or a paper-like screen protector where real tangible benefits do come into play. Those are already here. We have those right now. What we need in order to move into meaningfully new professional territory for the iPad lineup is software. But there is an order that things have to happen in, and this is where things get really interesting and really exciting for somebody who's considering getting an iPad Pro right now. Before the Mac level software that pros crave can exist on the iPad, the iPad Pro in particular first needs to have Mac level hardware and it just got a Mac chip. 
Apple's Greg Jaswiak recently talked about the hardware needing to be there before the software can come in in an interview just after last week's event. It needs to exist first, right? You can't have an app that requires more performance than a system's capable of, then it doesn't work. So you need to have the system be ahead of the apps. So did you hear what it sounded like he was trying to say there without actually saying it? because he can't spill the beans right now. I'm not sure what else he could have said actually, other than, hey, pro apps are coming really soon to hint at new, important, and hopefully worthy software changes being right around the corner. Because with these new iPad Pros, we do now have a system that's ahead of the apps. And in some ways, I guess we've actually had that for quite a while, but not nearly to this extent. Now, there's definitely some wiggle room in Jaws's statement. He definitely didn't attach a timeline, for instance, and he also didn't say how things could play out. But in my mind, there's really three distinct possibilities. Possibility number one, Apple brings its Pro app lineup to the iPad Pro. Xcode, Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, etc. And other app developers then would follow suit. Possibility number two, iPadOS picks up some software tweaks geared towards enhancing pro workflows. Maybe things like a real multi-app windowing experience, which would provide for a better multitasking experience on a Zoom call, or maybe something like real multi-user support, or even better, something like real external display support. Possibility number three, macOS itself actually makes its way to the iPad, something people have been speculating about for a while now, since macOS Big Sur now shares some design commonalities with iPadOS and iOS. Of course, there is another possibility that I see the cynics out there pushing and promoting, but which I think is actually pretty unlikely at this point, namely that the iPad Pro would disappointingly continue to offer the same old iPad experience that you can find on other iPads in a richer, fuller, more vibrant sort of way, thanks mostly to new hardware. Personally, I'm hoping that WWDC brings some kind of combination of possibilities one and two. So new pro apps combined with a newer, more enhanced iPad OS. I honestly don't find that I need Mac OS on my iPad because it's the apps themselves that let me get the work done. Not that better multitasking or other features that frame in those apps wouldn't help, but it's the apps that are the workhorses. No app, no work. It's as simple as that. Now, aside from Greg's quote from before, I do think we have some other evidence that points to these potentialities becoming a reality. First, think about the spectrum of higher end iPads, the iPad Air, the 11 inch iPad Pro, and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. On the spectrum, the 11 inch iPad Pro might actually be closer to the iPad Air than to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now, since the 11 inch Pro lacks that mini LED display, the only thing really separating that 11 inch Pro from the Air is that M1 chip. But functionally, you can basically do the same kind of work on both the Air and the 11 inch. So if Apple wants to truly distinguish the Pro lineup this year, they could make it so that only the Pro iPads can run Pro apps should they become available. And in that scenario, the M1 chip makes a lot more sense in the grand scheme of things being in the 11 inch. I don't know if you guys remember last year, but there was so much overlap between the iPad Air and the iPad Pros until these new models came out that it was hard for people to even pick. So Pro apps only available on the Pro iPads would be a huge differentiator thanks to the M1 chip. And then there's the new Thunderbolt port, which Apple specifically went out of its way to mention at the spring event could power the $6,000 Pro Display XDR. I don't think that Apple went out of their way just to let us know that you can mirror your iPad content on a $6,000 display. Obviously, that makes no sense. I actually think that Apple was potentially very strongly hinting that real external display support could be coming to the iPad lineup soon and potentially just to the iPad Pros. Because let's face it, without new software enhancements, the Pro's mini LED display really only makes it the rich professional's best sidecar option when paired with the actual Pro Display XDR. And that can't be the ultimate or true destiny of the iPad Pro. Next, we have the fact that the Pro can be upgraded to two terabytes of storage with 16 gigs of RAM. Those are big numbers for an iPad. And when you add all the pieces together, storage, RAM, Thunderbolt, M1 chip, that's a lot of overhead. There has to be a purpose, and that purpose has to be 
pro apps. But let's step back here. It's not just Apple that's gonna need to make some changes to make this all workable. It's actually gonna be us, the pro consumers as well. Because right now, $20 for an app seems outrageous. Seems like you're getting gouged. But on the Mac, you're gonna have to spend $200 to get an app like Final Cut Pro. Would you be willing to spend $200 to get a Final Cut Pro on your iPad Pro? I know I would because it supports my workflow. It's crucial to my work if I'm gonna do my work that I need to do to make a living on my iPad Pro. But it's gonna require a complete rethinking of our app store relationship. And clearly, non-pro users who just use an iPad to browse the web or check out their photos or watch some videos are not gonna wanna pay those kinds of prices. And again, we're coming to a really clear dividing line between a device that a pro would really like to use and would be willing to pay extra for and the iPad as we know it, which already has so many great options to choose from. Now, it's not easy for Apple to bring a pro app to the iPad Pro, aside from just needing the power of the M1, because you have ecosystems built around these pro apps. So when you're talking about Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro and then making the jump, what do you do as the developers and as Apple for those plugins. Now, regarding whether or not Apple wants to merge Mac OS and iPad OS, an Apple exec recently said, we're quite proud of the fact that we work really, really hard to create the best products in the respective category. So that signals to me that obviously Apple wants the iPad to be the best tablet out there, the iPad Pro to be the best pro tablet out there. And for that to happen, it necessarily needs to have pro apps. And I think based on everything we've talked about in this video that Apple is very aware of that and they're heading in that direction and that at WWDC, we could see an iPad Pro announcement that ends up being 10 times more exciting than the actual reveal of the iPad Pro itself. They've teed it up that way. They've primed the pump. This is the prelude to a brand new iPad Pro era. Now here's a final thought just to kind of help wrap this video up. Adding a faster chip to the iPad Pro is kind of like adding a faster engine, a more powerful engine to an already fast race car, the fastest race car. Almost pointless, unless there's a really good reason to add that extra power. Regular iPad users in this analogy, the web surfers, the gamers, the email checkers, the movie watchers, they're kind of like the drivers of this race car. But would-be professional iPad Pro users don't just need to drive. In order to get where they need to go, they need a new mode of transportation. It's kind of like they need the race car to grow some wings, so to speak. And Pro apps are really what would allow the iPad Pro to take flight for the most demanding users. So yes, I do expect big paradigm shifting changes to be on the horizon for the iPad Pro lineup, but how soon, I can't tell you. I don't work for Apple, I have no inside information, I'm just a person observing and making some inferences here. But I can say, I do expect at WWDC, at least if not the unveiling of these features, the rollout of maybe the plan. Now I'm not sure if my analysis today is gonna end up affecting anybody's purchase decision, but hopefully you feel a little bit more informed right now about the state of things, and that should be useful. That's it for this video. I can't wait to get my hands on this iPad, on the new iPad OS, as these things roll out in the coming months. So if you wanna see my unboxing, my review, the tips that I'm gonna give you, the apps that I'm gonna recommend, make sure to hit subscribe, because if you like the vibe of this video, then I've got plenty more where that came from in the future. So thanks for hanging out today, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.